first and foremost, it's an, an honor to be here um, on this uh, esteemed panel uh, with some amazing uh, people um, that I've uh, you know, heard about. And it's a blessing for me to being the president of the Hip Hop Caucus, uh, being a part of this discussion. A little information about the Hip Hop Caucus. Um, most of you probably recognize it from when we were the little campaign in 2004 called Vote or Die. Might have heard about that with uh, P. Diddy. And now we're doing a new campaign with a number of my good friends from called Respect My Vote um, with T.I. and Keisha Cole and Chris Brown and Omar Epps and so many others. And so this is critical to us um, because this process um, of, of politics is evolving. I love working for the Hip Hop Caucus. Let me just say that. I absolutely love because it gives me the freedom to work with my generation and my community and to do it the way that I want to do it. That's important. Um, my generation, my group, we're about now 700,000 people in the Hip Hop Caucus. And we span between those born in 1965 to those born in 1995. So those who are either 43 or 13. Why that's important is because eight years ago, those who were 13 were only five. But eight years from now, those who are 13 will be 21. Mm -hmm. And that will be in the election of 2016. So my generation, which will be spanning from 51 to 21, you can imagine the power and the influence that we will be wielding and having at that time. And for us, fair elections and clean elections is a life and death issue. Mm -hmm. We believe that people are literally dying because our politicians are spending more time trying to get the funders and the payola than they are taking care of the people in their community. That is a dangerous scenario. It is life and death when they're more concerned about the insurance companies than they are about the little girl whose pancreas is exploding because she does not have health insurance. Something is wrong when we are more concerned about the bankers on Wall Street than about the people on Main Street. For real, the Hip Hop Caucus is actually nonpartisan. Matter of fact, we even think we're postpartisan. <laughs> Beyond that. Because really, at this time, we recognize that we don't have fair elections or clean elections. This is not about a Democrat Congress or a Republican Congress. But what we are looking for in the 21st century is a human Congress. Mm -hmm a Congress that puts humanity at the forefront. But you can't do that if you're owned by a corporation. You can't do that if you're owned by some millionaire. You can't even do it if you're owned by a block of people. Something is wrong. And so the Hip Hop Caucus um, recognized that this is a critical issue um, in this process. Let me just say one reason why this is important to us. Um, because obviously we are dealing with democracy and getting more people involved in democracy. We believe that that should be starting from the high schools. We should, we should be in the high schools, getting people in the high schools involved in the process from the very beginning and getting them involved, registered to vote. But obviously it's important for us because obviously for our generation, we are the YouTube generation and the MySpace generation, and the Facebook generation. So we like to take things into our own hands. We, if we, we can't do a website, we'll put it on Facebook. We'll do it on MySpace. We, we, we won't need the media, we'll be the media on YouTube. So in this case, for us to be the politicians, then we have to have fair elections and clean elections. That's the one, so this process actually keeps us from doing this. And we, we, we understand that. We, we, we say even in our YouTube generation, the revolution may not be televised, <laughs> but it will be uploaded. We'll put that thing on YouTube in a hot second and we'll put it out there. <laughs> we'll put it out there. So for our movement to have clean elections and fair elections, we're gonna have to put it out there for everyone. So let me just, really conclude with, with this, these, these two things. 
on Super Tuesday that just passed in February, a day after Super Bowl, when we had uh, Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton and even Huckabee, who's on Saturday Night Live and doing a number of other things, trying to reach young people. Between the ages of 18 and 29, those who had not gone to college, 93%, I repeat, 93% of young people who had not gone to college between the ages of 18 and 29 did not vote on Super Tuesday. 93%. You can say what you want to say. And I understand that now we're only about 2,000 people being registered to vote in, in the great state of Indiana, registering almost 600,000 people in a year. Amazing numbers. But you still have so many people who are saying that this system is not their system. And they are saying it rightfully because they recognize at the end of the day that on November 5th, after whoever is put in office, that their voice has no meaning or bearing on this system. So why in the world would they need to put forth that energy, that enthusiasm, if their voice means nothing? If they call and ask for a stoplight on Main Street, if they call and say I'm being foreclosed, if they call and say I have no health care, if they say that this war is egregious and is unlawful and we're killing people who are, who are innocent in Iraq, then they're saying they have no voice in this process. And so we can't bring that back. We can't bring that back until we have fair elections, and that number would then begin to come down. I guarantee you, as it was for the civil rights movement, the fair elections movement is critical for our generation. This is our lunch counter moment for the 21st century. This is critical for us to have clean and fair elections. And so I conclude with this, and we're not going to give up. And we're not going to give up. But I will say this, we must also be recognized that there must be some real change right. in this process. It would be unfair for us, and even let me say this to be real, because one thing that we say in hip hop, we want to keep things real, is that there even sometimes, and Barbara Lee um, is our advisory board chair for the Hip Hop Caucus. You should know that our entire advisory board is almost all the women who are in the Congressional Black Caucus. I don't think there's no mistake in that either. I say that because as, I, as we are fighting against wars, and we recognize that we are dealing with the fact that, and I say this even as myself, as a former US Air Force officer, the fact that one million beautiful brown Iraqis have died with our taxpayer dollars. That the bags that we've been carrying here at the Congressional Black Caucus, the conscience of the Congress, outside the bag say Lockheed Martin. And so outside the bag says Lockheed Martin. And they're the ones who are paying for the planes that go over. Then truthfully, how much say can we have in the system? We have to have fair elections. Humanity is on the line. It is critical. And for my generation, this is our lunch counter moment for the 21st century. By the time that the 2016 and 2020, let us be our cause that it is mandatory that there is no money in politics and there's fair elections and we truthfully, as the dream generation, as black and white and brown and yellow, male and female, hip hop generation, the dream generation, they did it in the 20th century, we would do it in the 21st century and bring fair elections to America. Uh, thank you so much.